Hi everyone, welcome back to Rainbow Toast Studios. My name is Rainbow and I have another speed build for you today. I'm actually like really excited about this one because um, we are completing our little like facilities hub over here. Um, the warehouse was like kind of sort of part one um, and I will include a link to that video in the little like I drop down link thing that comes up in the, in the actual video um, and maybe in the description as well if you guys want to check out that part first that is just the other building on the other side of this little area. Um, I had started making that warehouse kind of the hub for everything and then basically I uh, was thinking like these would not actually be in the same buildings technically like we'd have this other more vet and animal focused building and then the other one is kind of like a commissary and maintenance um, type hub where you know people where we store supplies and they come for new uniforms and um, cleaning supplies and all of those things because you actually need a lot of toilet paper <laughs> to stock a whole zoo <laughs> so that was the kind of the thinking behind that one um, and then just thinking over here, I could have like actual quarantine facilities and like a vet and like large keeper hut and everything. So anyways, this is what we end up with um, as far as all of the like vet things. And one big focus that I had was multiple quarantine enclosures um, because I have seen that in um, the about vet buildings I've worked in and the zoos I've worked in, um, there's multiple enclosures, especially like a lot of smaller cages for like birds. Um, not so much a lot for larger animals because usually they will, you know, like bring the uh, the vet to larger animals if they need that. I did try to like keep that in mind um, that a large animal might need to come over here. So like I got this idea to make a scale um, and I made it pretty large um, so that pretty much like a, something as large as a Siberian tiger could come and be weighed in here basically. Um, anything larger than that, giraffes, elephants, I think they would probably find a way to bring something to them. Um, at least in this zoo we will pretend that they don't have the means, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we could have made it larger, I don't know. But um, I think this is pretty reasonable. It matches pretty much what I've seen before. Um, and we end up using this larger quarantine area so that um, the one that I just built with the barrier fence, um, that one ends up being our largest quarantine area. And then the smaller ones are kind of for like um, smaller cats and birds. Um, maybe like dingoes, wild dogs, anything like that would be able to fit in those. Um, and then the larger one would be reserved for things like tigers, bears, um, anything like that. I did want to leave like a foundation for my vet building and I thought it made sense. Um, I also ended up using a sort of foundation for all of the, um, the fencing. I really like that fencing as far as like being like an actual cage, um, but at least in the largest one we would want that to be grounded in some concrete because a Siberian tiger against like a little mesh fence <laughs> would not do very well. Um, even if the assumption is that they're going to be under sedation for the most of the time that they're in the building. Um, yeah, probably better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> so here I'm getting set up um, for the scale idea that I had. Um, I'm, it, I was kind of just basing it off of like a normal vet scale that you would see like um, <clears throat> at a at an actual like vet's office. For like dogs and cats just twice as big so we could fit a few more um, species of animals on here. In the end this um, area ends up a little bit cluttered um, but I don't think that would be entirely out of the norm like what I was thinking honestly is that 
for most of the time they would keep like the bulk of the cages in here um, you saw I kind of grabbed one, like the transport crates, is what I mean, not the cages. Um, they would keep like the majority of the transport crates in here to keep them out of the weather and everything. Um, and then whenever they need to use it, kind of like open up that big animal transport door, get out all of the big uh, crates that would be in the way. And just for the time that they're using it, have the crates just outside between the buildings because there is a lot of space um, to be able to store things outside, but for the most part, not keeping them outside um, so they don't get any weather damage. But usually um, able to stick it out just fine for a little while. With here, I am just, um, I just decided to duplicate the door. <laughs> like whatever, because <laughs> it needs to take up the whole um, area between the concrete and the fence um, so I just duplicated the door so it can have like you know like a solid frame to it and everything um, the other enclosures that I end up making in here I don't really worry about it because they would be smaller animals um, something like a dingo you wouldn't so much have to worry about it with a simple mesh fence um, compared to a an ape or bear or tiger um, that we are assuming would be housed in this um, in this one over here. To get sidetracked a little bit, I'm talking about the zoo as a whole. Um, I, I think if I was to do another realistic zoo like this in the future, I might actually want to take like half um, half of the zoo to be just backstage and parking because that's more realistic than how I have it here because how I ended up like doing it is I do have a nice big like backstage and um, parking area in the front it's not huge um, but it fits like the largest animal transport crate and stuff like that um, but realistically this area wouldn't just be like smack in the middle of the zoo which is kind of where it is now because um, I was looking at it and I'm like this is just like a really long piece of land in the middle of nothing um, like maybe I could have shaped it a little better um, to where it looked nicer but also like I, I don't think that would have been very much a priority it would have just been like something that we want to get out of the way but also still be a central hub thing so I'm not too worried about it but if I was to redo this entire zoo in the future um, in a realistic way I think that I would focus more on um, having a very large like the entire like left part left half of the zoo is dedicated to parking and um, staff facilities because in the zoo that I have worked at, that's how it was. Like you had the administration would kind of wrap around in the front of the parking lot and then everything else was on the side um, of the parking lot before connecting into the zoo, which really makes sense. Um, if you think about it, it's out of the way, it's close to the staff parking, it's close to any supply trucks or anything like that. That was another big one. Um, most of the like restaurants and stuff are kind of focused towards that side of the zoo, um, at least the larger ones, so that they um, are easier to supply. Back into the build here, um, you'll see I have gone ahead and constructed those smaller, um, smaller quarantine cages, and also honestly, like a. A regular building like I'm used to would have even more of those like a lot like a lot of bird cages to like straight up just standing bird cages that are maybe like two feet wide um, a lot of bird cages a lot more cages like this so this is really just like you know for a semblance of it and also considering that like the actual quarantine um, staff facility would have more in there as well let's just assume that <laughs> so that I'm not building like 
20 gauges. Um, we're just gonna have a semblance of it. And then I also wanted to have a little outdoor area here um, is what I'm getting to work on. This is also realistic. Um, I have seen where there are like one or two outdoor areas, um, usually res reserved for primates um, that are gonna be climbing and um, a little bit larger so they can get out and stretch their legs, maybe like an observation area. I did end up um, putting some glass in so that keepers could watch over, um, make sure that they are all good and not picking at stitches or anything like that, um, that they would have to worry about once they are out on exhibit. And I did make these little things out of the, um, the fake trees that we got with the aquatic pack. I have really liked using it for this purpose. Um, I did also make something like this in the reptile house that I ended up scrapping because I had like a, uh, a false exhibit in the center with an anaconda, um, but it just ended up taking too much space, too much sidewalk area, um, so I got rid of it. But the idea of using this tree kind of stuck, um, and I really like it as a little faux just climber thing to throw in there. Um, I also threw in to the smaller exhibits a little like semicircle thing to act as a bowl. Um, I don't like using the actual bowls that are in the habitat stuff because the keepers actually complain that they can't reach it or can't fill it, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to use fake things that kind of look like it. And you'll see here, I actually got around to getting a broom. Um, I probably could have made one like I made one before. I do prefer the ones that are like white um, instead of brown, but someone had made these um, and I think it'd be a pretty good idea to have a shovel as well. Um, so I went ahead and threw it into the warehouse because the warehouse would definitely have a broom or two, um, if anything. So I did throw those in. Here I am starting to make the roof and then realize that I actually need to put some lights in. Um, I hate doing lights. <laughs> lights are probably the worst of anything. Um, and I even, so I go through all the trouble of putting in the lights and then I figure I might as well do like a night shot, which I usually forget to do. Um, but these lights are not very bright. So it kind of looks like if anything, they're like night lights. So you can see like in the case of an emergency and not like wake any animals up, but no one's going to be working in here because it is not bright at all. Um, we need like, we need, I would have needed a supplement with like the area lights if I would have actually good lighting. I'm not the best with lighting. I don't like it. <laughs> so if anything, like the lights here are, you know, for some semblance of reality that there would be these kinds of lights in there and not because they actually properly light it up. Um, I did cut that night part out though because it didn't really seem worth it. Um, and so now we are approaching um, the sort of end of it. Um, and I will explain in a second because that is kind of like what I was really going to end it on. Um, and then I'm like, but that's just a rectangle though, because no surprise, I didn't have inspiration for this one. I didn't go like find a picture or anything. I'm just like, eh, I'll, I'll, I'll build it myself. I got this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so I grabbed this inspiration picture and, um, we kind of revamp it. Don't touch the inside though. Um, I do not touch the inside, really just the outside. So I'm about to show you guys what we do um, when we want to take it from a rectangle to something that's actually beautiful and you can be proud of and put on YouTube. Um, <laughs> Cause we are not putting that rectangle on YouTube, okay? So I just made this nice little entrance part. Um, that is very typical for buildings, even in backstage areas of a zoo. 
Um, I feel like the, the one at the zoo that I worked at did have this kind of area. Um, and it was a white building. It was. I think it was a concrete white building. No, it wasn't wood. But this is cuter. <laughs> it does end up pretty cute for a backstage building. It has no business being this cute. Um, I did see a lot of the inspiration pictures have like brick um, almost actually kind of like the warehouse that I built where it's like partially brick and partially that sort of um, corrugated metal yeah good job rainbow that was exactly right <laughs> I was like thinking in my head like tin foil aluminum siding what am I gonna say <laughs> corrugated metal there we go <laughs> that's the right one so I have this cute little area up front um, I did have to kind of fake the, the arches um, by burying the bottom of the, those are like the big window ones. Um, I just buried the bottom of it and made a square arch that way. So everything that I'm focusing on from here on out is beautifying um, and not anything really more um, like realistic, you know, supply type things. Um, if you're watching for that kind of information for like what I would um, have experienced working in zoos, that's pretty much over with. The inside is over with. Um, now it's really just making it more beautiful, um, more aesthetically pleasing and good for YouTube at this point. Um, and I also bring back in our old friend AC um, because I, I do like doing the AC units and like vents and stuff on top. I have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> and I just kind of wing it. I don't know how actual, how it would actually look or work, um, but I do my best <laughs> with how I've seen it laid out before. Um, and I end up like only putting it about halfway um, because I realized that the vents were kind of blocking the windows on top, which I did not want at all. Um, for this, I actually uh, snagged the color from the vet sign and just like, it was like 4646B, something like that. And I just put that in. And now we have this cute little color in the back that matches our vet and it can tell us, you know, from a distance that, hey, this is the vet building. Um, I also added in, I didn't really talk about this, but I did add in another, um, not market, but the, the trade, trade center. Yes, we got it. <laughs> we got it, rainbow. Trade center um, and something else. Is that a research center? I don't think it is. Um, is that another keeper hut? <laughs> I think I put in two keeper huts, possibly. Um, but I did have two other small things that I snuck back in there. Um, did steal the lights from the warehouse that I made with the fence posts so that I could have them hanging from the ceiling and not have to create a faux roof that cuts off the, the lights. I did have a lot to finagle to be able to keep the roof the way I have it and not just block it off um, because it did actually create a problem for the cages as well because I was thinking that this could be something that's used for birds also um, I did have to block off the top of those smaller quarantine cages to make sure that nothing would have escaped I just capped it off with some concrete um, rather than you know cap off the roof um, and have those windows be essentially for a show. Um, I did want that light coming in there. So here more, more light things, <laughs> more, more light things. Um, trying to like get up under the roof and see like what's actually going to look right. Um, I ended up having to add an additional fence post, which makes sense because we have to be at an angle with it. Um, put a bunch of those in. And yeah, still, despite all of these lights, we are still not very um, bright in here at night, but whatever. Also, the lighting. The lighting is a little bit weird in this game. <laughs> I also had that issue to contend with. Um, 
checking it out at night, like all of the cars that I got have lights on them um, and they just go right through the wall, <laughs> right through the wall of the warehouse and of the vet building. Um, the lights do that. They like don't care if something is in the way. Um, they're not going to light it properly. And like the sun, you could have something that's totally closed off, but if it's not underground, the sun is still going to reach it, um, which was something that I learned the hard way in my reptile building because I really so badly wanted to have it have like ambient lighting, um, have everything be like dark and green. Um, and I was working on it. I think I was working on it at night so that I could best see the lights. Um, and then I turned it on for day and it was so sad even with the lights on. It was like not green at all. Uh, <laughs> that's not something that I have up on my channel. Um, unfortunately that was before I was back to doing my videos. So um, maybe something that I will do a tour of um, if anyone is interested in seeing a tour of this zoo. I have some other stuff that I haven't put up in speed builds yet. So maybe something to look at in the future. Um, here just putting in the little observing, um, observing portals, <laughs> windows, <laughs> um, with the clear glass because for whatever reason we don't have a window that matches this size, which would make sense, but whatever. Um, just throw up this little light here. Normally a light like this in the actual enclosure would have caging around it but I don't see any way of doing that simply, so we're just going to hope that the animals don't touch it. <laughs> we're going to hope and pray that the animals don't touch it. Um, and just threw a tire in there for enrichment. Seemed like it made sense. It looked good. Um, and I really like it. We are getting pretty much to completion at this point and just have some finishing touches to put in here. Um, this is actually kind of my favorite, this arrowhead bush is so like like regular overgrown um kind of untouched uh what am i looking for like a like a scenery area that's not really something that's you know like pruned regularly or kept up or anything it's just like you know some some overgrown grass and stuff in this corner um I think that's how it would be. There's a lot of areas in the zoo where I, I sneak those in to have some kind of ground cover that's not um, super like um, pruned or upkept or anything um, with flowers and all that. I think the areas I would have that wouldn't be, you know, all over the place, especially in a facilities only area. Um, you would just kind of let the bushes do their thing and trim them back every once in a while every like month or so that was also something I briefly thought about like do I want to put in like a lawn mower or something in the facilities area and while while zoos do have um, horticultural crews I'm not sure if they would straight up have like riding mowers and everything just because there's not really an area where a riding mower can be used um, so maybe you could throw like a weed whacker um, or small push mower maybe um, probably more like a weed whacker and like smaller detailing horticultural stuff like that because there are definitely horticulturists um, in zoos that is something that they do have, especially when you have all of these like mulched um, flower bed areas that they have to take care of. That's definitely a thing. Um, finally, put in a hose thing. I've never actually done this before, but this would definitely be something that is in any um, facilities area. We definitely need hoses. Um, and over here, it would more so be to. Um, rinse off any uh, bowls, uh, toys, anything that would be in the uh, in the cages that wouldn't be thrown into the washer, so like blankets, um, pillows, anything that would be thrown into the washer, obviously you're not throwing onto the hose, but um, anything like metal, plastic, um, 
And then in the warehouse, because I did move it over to the warehouse as well, um, warehouse, you could have anything from, you know, uh, brooms, brooms you would probably need to hose off in the vet area as well, but you know, just handy. Um, I'm sure you guys can imagine scenarios where those would be necessary. Um, and also outside, I mean, you could use that for like, you know, hosing off the, the cars, um, hosing off the actual, um, transport crates themselves that would definitely be necessary as well and here because I was putting AC up top I'm like they gotta have some way to get up there um, and for my reptile building I made an actual like little imagined staircase um, where they could get up up top but here I figured we could just do a ladder and have like these kind of enclosing bars around it um, which is something I've seen before, but look a little bit different to this um, Because the circular bars will actually wrap all the way around um, Once you get like past Four feet or something. Here's a little reptile house where I grabbed the, the AC um, And that in the corner was that little um, faux Like staircase area that I was talking about, but here we're doing a ladder and Honestly, I probably could have extended the bars on the ladder a little bit higher um, as far as the circular ones that go around. Um, I think it would have helped people get up top, but I, I liked the other ones like going actually into the wall um, as like a connection area. So I liked that. So I left it like that. I hope that's okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's okay maintenance man that you'll just have to hold on to the, <laughs> to the ceiling to grab and like pull yourself up that way um and as i mentioned for this like i don't know what i'm doing i'm just gonna make like a nice looking network that could work <laughs> and hope that this is enough for them um i'm like i'm really happy with how the variety came out um how all of the different things, all of the different pieces we added really make this look like a real building that an architect um, had some say in. I am not an architect, so I really need the inspiration buildings, clearly. Um, <laughs> clearly from what I tried to pass off as, as a vet building earlier. <laughs> but, I mean, that's why I'm so excited about this one, because it really... Um, it turned into kind of like how to spice up your builds kind of thing. Um, so I, I really like that because that's the kind of thing that I like looking at um, on YouTube as far as the speed builds and, stu and such. Um, I do, I do, I like watch nothing but speed builds for the longest time before I even started <laughs> playing Planet Zoo. So like I did not get here on my own at all. Um, I watched so much, um, I was going to say Paul Soros Jr. I did, but not for Planet Zoo. Um, I watched so much Paulsley and, um, eventually once she started making more, um, speed builds, Simply Savannah, which a lot of my stuff is definitely modeled after, um, I got a lot of ideas from her, um, including the AC thing actually, because she did some AC on her polar bear, um, polar bear habitat. I want to say exhibit because of, plant, of Zoo Tycoon, but it's habitat in this game. Um, because of her polar bear habitat, she got, I think, actually this exact AC stuff from the Steam Workshop. So I'm like, you know what? That's a nice way to spice up a, a plain rectangle building. Um, my reptile house I did do without any inspiration, just kind of going off of memory with the um, zoo that I worked at and then spiced it up with some AC and that was pretty much it as far as the reptile building. And we are here, we made it to the tour. Um, yeah, just walking through, not anything too fancy. Um, there are our lights embedded into the roof as well as um, hanging and these are our additional things that I'm forgetting about. It's either it's either a keeper hut or 
I don't know, a research, a vet research maybe is what it is. Lovely little outside area. And then I do briefly show the back. It's just this. It's not really anything to it. Um, but let's climb up to the roof over here. Ugh. Eh. Okay, gotta, gotta hold on to the ceiling. Okay. <laughs> And just wanted to show off this bit because I did put all the AC out here. Um, and then let's fade back through the tree and have this lovely final look here. If you like this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Look forward to more um, Planet Zoo speed builds coming your way. Let me know if you want a tour of the um, of the zoo as it is now or any of my other zoos that I've done in the meantime since I was away from YouTube. And I will see you all later. Bye-bye. Hey there, it's your girl Rainbow. I really appreciate a like for checking out my other videos. Bye.